Scooby-Tube. Sorry, shut up. This week's Scooby-Tube is sponsored by How to Survive... A phone call. This week's Scuba Tube is sponsored by How to Survive Marine Creature Attacks. Hi guys and welcome to Scuba Tube. So first off, apologies for not being here last week. Uh, I had man flu, uh, but we want to say thank you to James, our producer, for stepping in on, uh, on last week's Weird Wednesday. Um, he didn't really enjoy himself. Um, <laughs> He did, he loved it. He was <laughs> full of beans and enthusiasm, just like he always is. Uh, but let's get back straight into the news. Uh, so first up, scientists race to save coral reefs. Uh, so with the Great Barrier Reef declared dead, again, and the, uh, the Maldives Reef recently declared dead. Um, scientists are now joining forces to save what reefs we have left in the world. Uh, so now we all know what you're thinking. All the reefs in the world will still be here when I'm long gone. Hopefully, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> but to put, it on to, you, ugh, to put it all into perspective, the world has lost just under half of its coral in the past 30 years alone. Uh, so that's a very real threat. If we don't get something done now, then scientists predict that 90% of coral should be dead by 2050. So that's a really scary number. Mm. Um, because coral reefs are so important to the human race, scientists are urging us to do our bit uh, to help. The tabloids have only focused on the Great Barrier Reef because it's, it's the barrier it's reef, the most yeah, it's yeah, the most well known. Yeah. Uh, but bleaching uh, will affect the rest of coral systems very soon. Uh, so what can we do? Uh, well, we have lots of organisations such as 50 Reefs, NOAA and the Ocean uh, Agency that have plenty of articles to read and of course donate uh, any way that you can. Uh, so we'll put the links below uh, just so that you can visit all their websites, uh, just so that you can get all of the facts uh, rather than just sort of... Us telling them, we'll like, yes, yeah, so turn your water off, <coughs> turn your heating down to a degree, like, yeah. there's, there's, you've got the generic facts, but then also as well, there are kind of core things that you can do to help with the coral reef, so rather than us blurting out all of these and the video being about two hours long, <laughs> it's better if you go over to those sites, so the links are below, and then you can just read at your, at your ledger as well. Yeah. So British cruise ship is in a deep water. So staying on the subject for it. <laughs> yeah. No, shallow, it's in a pool. Um, <laughs> so staying on the subject of coral, late last week a cruise ship uh, collided with coral in Indonesia. The uh, 4,200 gross ton ship rammed into the coral waters of Raja Empat. I'm pretty sure I said that correctly. Um, uh, endangering 16,000 or 1,600, sorry, square foot of the reef. Yeah, so the ship was visiting surrounding islands for bird watchers, basically. So a bunch of nerds, sorry, no offense to the bird watchers, <laughs> but yeah. So uh, when obviously the, 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 the boat itself, the cruiser collided with the coral. So the ship bedded itself so much that the boat had to have a tugboat to help pull it out. Um, so yeah, <laughs> the coral's been there for hundreds of years, you know, nature at its finest, thriving life, and then literally, a man-made thing destroys pretty much it all within, I don't know, hours just yeah. ramming into it. Yeah. Um, the Indonesian government obviously aren't very happy with this, apparently they're fuming, um, and they're now seeking legal action. As the, the boat blocked, uh, basically it didn't block, sorry, it broke the environmental law that they have out there, so they're, they're chasing it. What makes it worse though is this is actually really bad, so the captain of the ship um, literally Obviously drove into it, tugboat, uh, you know, kind of pulled them out and was like, I'm just gonna go, we're just gonna go, the boat's all right, we're just gonna leave. And then they, they didn't wait for any government official or anything like that, they didn't go like, to explain themselves <laughs> properly, they literally just left and headed to the Philippines. So it's literally like, smash! Yeah, oh, it's a hit and run. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, if... Literally, hum human race is ruining coral by two degrees warm temperature and they're just driving cruises and ships. Yeah, because they didn't want to anchor further out to shore. Yeah, there's bird watchers, man. They're like, I need to get a picture of the bird that's flying close to that, <laughs> so we must endanger the coral. But yeah, the, the, the sad thing about it as well is the coral itself is, um, it's completely and utterly unsavable, so yeah. that's it, it's gone. Yeah. Well, it's gone. Hey, uh, but on slightly nicer news, uh, tours to visit the Titanic will start next spring. That's pretty cool. 
Um, I better get my thermals. They, uh, they're not just VR tours. You, you don't just put on a headset and kind no. of imagine you're down there. Uh, you can see the real thing in the flesh, so to speak. Um, London-based tour operator Blue Marble Private have announced they have plans to take groups of nine people to the uh, legendary boat. Uh, the, the package includes time on an expedition yacht, uh, which will give tourists a great view of the wreckage site. Uh, and if you have more money, they can even go in a submarine for an up close view. That's really cool. Yeah. I'd like to do it. Yeah. If you've got the money though. <laughs> uh, this does cost a little bit more. Um, <laughs> how does one uh, $105,129 sound? Yeah. Bad expensive. Just a bit. But Just... you'd be in a very elite list of few people that have ever seen it in. I've seen it. I saw it. It's on Netflix, Titanic. <laughs> I just want to go there to find the pearl that the old lady trapped off the side. Oh, uh, the, uh, the jewel of the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. And to just try and find that. Because apparently, because Titanic's completely real, what happened at the end of the movie? You know that picture they did of Kate Winslet? They didn't keep it, they chucked it over the side. So I'm going to go there just to find that as well. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to stop being stupid. <coughs> Scarpa Flow, that's the title of this segment, Scarpa Flow. So underwater photography uh, and sketches by two divers are being used to, to protect and to map Scarpa Flow. The project aims to map seven sunken uh, First World War, World War I vessels off the coast of Scotland and help protect them for the future. Uh, the team spent their time photographing the site and sketching where the vessels are, basically mapping them out. Um, and they have pr the, basically the, the point of these plans is to pass them on to other divers who can then add to them to the map system to basically build it up. So from cool. the vessels to any like fragments, so guns or anything like that, mm. basically anything that's around it. So there's, as I say, they, they really want to map, make the map real detailed. Um, on a side note, they've planned, uh, it's Scarpa Flow apparently is the only place where you can see World War One guns and cannons and all that sort of thing outside of the British War Museum as well. That's so cool. that's also what they're going to do. So the map is about the vessels, about finding any guns, any any weapons or anything like that on there. Um, but what they're also using the, the map to do, they're going to uh, track the um, and highlight the potential hazards that they have that that, that the area has. So we like discarded fish nets to help present uh, present prevent ghost fishing um, at the site and <coughs> stuff like that. So they they actually have dedicated site. Um, which is called the Sea Clean Machine to help track, um, you know, any hazards that you're in there. And what you can do as well, very much like the, you know, that the, there was the app last year that we were talking about on one of the first scuba tubes, mm. where like, you can you can kind of go, you can make notes where there's rubbish or there's trash somewhere. And it's basically like that. So you can go on the website, you can probably download the app, mm. and then you can go. I found this when I was diving at Scarpa Flow. I found this. And then they'll basically check it out and then they'll put it on the map as well. So that's cool. Yeah, so it's basically just to help preserve the area and to, to map the area as well. So yeah, yeah it's good. That's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, so Russia are to explore a sunken mansion. This is pretty cool. Yeah, it is cool. <laughs> uh, a group of Russian divers are on an expedition visiting a 17th century mansion in Yaroslav. Uh, the mansion in question was destroyed and disappeared underwater in 1941 due to the construction of a uh, a reservoir. I love that. I love it when they do that. Yeah. Like they do that in Wales and Scotland when they made the, the weather wise, right, John from Was. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, it's good. It's, it's an awesome thing. Every time I go into like a, uh, a museum or a really old fashioned building, I always think what it would be like if this was underwater and I could yeah. just dive around yeah, all the little cool. Hey, uh, but the, uh, the divers will be diving the site until late autumn this year. Uh, they will also look at surrounding areas for any architectural remains. They plan to create a 3D model of the site, mapping out what the area looked like before it was destroyed. Uh, again, just like Scapper, uh, they just want to take note of, uh, of what's there for other divers to add to and create a bigger picture and map the area. Yeah. It is cool. It like, is cool. I mean, a lot of dive sites are really being mapped so that before you jump in, you can get your kind of mind map. So you know your way around, you know yeah. where to go to look for stuff. Also as well, it means like if you're new to diving or if you're new to that site, rather than going, oh, my mate Dave says this bit's here and then you work out, if you've got, I might go, well, I really want to see this because I've seen the pictures or I've seen video footage. That means you can go straight there rather yep. than spending time trying to figure out where you are. You can literally log yes. the coordinates, yeah. go straight down there. So it's going to mean that you can actually dive for longer and yeah. see more things rather than traveling to and from places, yeah. which is really, really cool. That's cool. 
Predicting the bends, so pre predicting how bad the bends will be has always been a tricky one with scuba divers. But researchers have come up with a new model to predict how you know how ill you are from decompression sickness. Luckily, no divers that took the test you know were harmed or had, were at any risk um, when gathering the data for the new model, which is always good. Yeah, that was good. You know, they didn't use snakes or goats, <laughs> which is always good. Anyway, the Navy has used a thing called a data set for, uh, and have basically created over 3,000 simulated dives, which they conducted in a hyperbaric chamber. Uh, using this data, along with models of how gas is absorbed and released by human tissue, they came up with six, level, six levels of potential severity. I said it! I said it, guys! Yeah! Awesome! So, using these six levels, they break down into pain and how serious the manifesto is. And they're using these models to quickly predict the likelihood of your decompression sickness and also as well how bad or severe it could be. So like, right, so on the scale, pain, seven, uh, you know, manifesto, seven. Uh, you, you, you in a lot of trouble there. <laughs> so yeah, so it's, it's a pretty bad thing. It's a pretty cool thing, technology. It's, yeah, it, 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 it's good so that we can, we can better understand what's going on yeah because there's always been there's been so many different models and algorithms over yeah. what's really going on whilst we're submerged uh, but this is, is another step forward yeah. into understanding what's going on you can yeah notify it quicker just 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 generally the the, the process is going to be a lot quicker and it's going to be a lot more accurate yeah. as well so hopefully you know it'll get better and better as yeah. they, you know use it more <laughs> yeah. okay so let's take a look at some youtube clips the first one is from jfp frills uh, or freeze, fries, freeze, freeze. freeze. This guy, um, <clears throat> he shared his video uh, with us on uh, on last week's Scuba Chew. Uh, the video is him diving in Bali in 2016. Uh, it's shot really well. Awesome soundtracks, a nice one. Let's check it out in the link yeah. below. Diving standard video right there, Sick. beautifully shot. So the second you uh, second video is from YouTuber. Svetlana. Svetlana Rudin, uh, hopefully I said the surname right, um, and it follows her journey on diving the Florida Keys. It's again, it's another classic diving video. It looks awesome. Uh, the dive wreck statue on this, the one with the satellite, I can never remember the name, it yeah. always disappears from my head. The satellite, it looks awesome. And as I say, the video itself just ticks all the diving boxes. Good soundtrack, good clear visibility. Mm. Yeah, that's it, it's cool. And that's it for this week. If you missed last week's Weird Wednesday, check out the link above us. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and safe diving. And uh, next week, James is going to be in the <coughs> Weird Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs>